We are live. All right. Hey, awesome. Yanni, how you doing today, man? Good, good. How's everybody? Good, good. We see uh, quite a few people popping in here. And, and Waver, can you hear us as well? Yep, you guys sound good. Hey, everyone. I'm Andrew Waver. I'll be uh, moderating today. Um, so again, thanks everyone for, for hopping on the line. So again, this is the great little trivia event that, that uh, Gatita was, was uh, nice enough to help us out with. And I think there's just some, some great content here. So again, Yoni uh, is CEO over at Gatita and Jason McGee is the senior director of sales over here at Take a Metric. So thank you both for, for hopping on the line. I think it should be a great event. Awesome, looking yeah. forward. Yeah, Yoni, it's uh, always good to talk to you, man. We've uh, gotten to know you very well over the last year, and it's just every single time you're always doing something new. So really excited to have this uh, this format here today. Unlike anything that we've done uh, virtually, you actually used this format when we did our show together, Prime Talk, in, in New York City. So Yeah, trying to take the physical into the digital, you know, see if uh, can, everybody can enjoy the same taste. Uh, I love it, man. Well said. So we'll give everybody a couple more minutes here. It would be good if uh, anybody who's uh, seen a lot of attendees in here, anybody, can you all just message us and let us know if you can hear us and maybe tell us where you're from too. Make sure audio is good and just see where everybody's tuning in over the world. So. Awesome. All right. Let me see if I understand this. Uh, it's, uh, the interactive presentation, I'm, I'm, I got full control on, but this uh, little sidebar here for um, go to webinar, that's new. It's new to me, you know. I'm so used to Zoom. So let me try to figure this out. If you used to Zoom, man. Um, yeah, Zoom. It's already yeah. my DNA. You open my blood. You see something, you know, it says Z O O M, you know. Yeah. And uh, and just a couple, just final kind of housekeeping notes, you know, uh, before we're getting started uh, in full. So for everyone on the line, we're, we are recording this, so you guys will all get a uh, copy of this recording uh, roughly 24 hours after we finish. And additionally, uh, if you want to ask questions, there, there is a question box kind of as a part of kind of the platform we're going to be using for the quiz. So just uh, keep your eyes peeled for that once, you, once we'll go through some of the instructions for that. And as part of that, just be aware that it will ask you kind of for your name and email address. That's really just to track, obviously, your answers as we go through, because we're excited to give away the prize for the person with the most correct answer. So that's just for, for tracking purposes. So uh, when you log in there, just be aware we'll ask you for that. Yeah, a um, couple of things. Anthony, uh, looks like you're in Maryland. I'm in Virginia, so not too far from each other. Um, folks, this is, it is interactive. Um, so uh, Yoni will walk through the steps to, to get live in the platform. It's a simple website where you actually just put in a code that we'll give you. Um, why not win, try and win $500 and learn something along the way? So we really appreciate it. Appreciate it. We'll give everybody just a couple more minutes here. Looks like we have uh, Matt from Wisconsin. Thanks for tuning in. Um, um, you'll see, Shimon, you'll see, uh, Shimon asks, where do you answer, uh, answer questions? Yoni will walk through that. What yeah, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to, I'm going to, everybody that's here today with us, I'm going to take you hand in hand into the actual uh, uh, module that you can uh, uh, put your answers in and participate. We're going to get to that very, very shortly. It's going to be pretty simple, but heads up, uh, have your phones ready. You can do it through your phone, but if not, it, it, it's pretty convenient, but if not, you can, of course, use your computer as well. Yeah, when we're doing, we did this before, it's really easy just to get on your phone and just do it right here. It takes two seconds just to, you know, just, just log in and do it. That way you can actually pay attention to the content while you're putting your answers in. So, yeah, very, very excited about this. And it's always good when there's money on the line, too. Yeah, you know, they say uh, put, your, uh, put your answers where your money is or put your money where your answers are or something like that. Put your money where your mouth is or whatever flavor of it you want, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't want to say that, you know, so blowingly, but you took it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, great. We'll just give, we'll probably start in, in a minute here. Um, looks like we have a bunch of folks coming on. I just don't want to start off too quickly before, because people who come late. Um, yeah, we'll give another minute. So we have, you know, the first five minutes is to assembly of the crowd and the stadium, and um, we'll, we'll move on to the show. I love it. I love it. Um, 
Liz. I uh, see that Liz is in here as well. Liz, welcome to the team. Really excited to have uh, you join Take a Metrics. Uh, for those who don't know Liz, she's probably the most connected person in the industry. And, and Liz, just a, a pleasure to, to have a, a, a beer with or a, a glass of Savion Blanc for her. So, How far uh, are you guys from uh, each other in Virginia, uh, Jason? Maybe an hour. So still COVID, we haven't been able to, to, to catch up with Liz uh, in person yet, but hopefully that'll all change here in the next few months. But then again, I said that back in March. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. slow and steady wins the race. We'll get there, God willing. We will, for sure. Um, okay, awesome. let's just kick this off, Jay. Yeah, let's go for it. Yoni, over to you, my man. All right, so welcome everybody to the show. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, actually, this is, I guess, for you, Jason, to give us a little uh, rundown on uh, Tika. I think, Andrew, I think you're gonna, you're gonna take this slide and, and, and give a little bit of info. Yeah, sh sure, sure. So uh, again, for those on the line who, who may not know about Tika Metrics, so we're a technology platform, but we also pair that. So if you wanna obviously you know, control your advertising, uh, using us, you can do it through the SaaS platform. Uh, if you want to kind of have those hands on keyboard yourself, you like having that control. But right for, let's say, if you're a, maybe a larger brand that, that wants that extra help, uh, we offer a team of expert analysts to really help you kind of take your advertising to the next level. And we work obviously with, with Amazon, uh, which is what we're talking about a lot here, but we'll also kind of cover, again, a, a bit about this within the presentation, but we're one of only just four ads API partners across walmart.com. So if you're looking to kind of ramp your advertising up, uh, your presence up on walmart.com, uh, definitely uh, give us a look. Uh, and here's some of the brands, as you can see on here, that we, that we work with right now, but just a quick quick overview there. Okay, I wanna say my uh, little bit of a blessing to uh, Tika Metrics, full disclosure. You know, I, in my background, I used to be an Amazon seller. And uh, actually, when I, be, uh, when I was selling on Amazon, the moment we started using Tika Metrics, that's when pretty much our Amazon life started to change. We saw the numbers, we saw the visibility, and we're able to scale like crazy. So thanks to Tika Metrics, uh, you know, I'm a full um, blown fan. I uh, was able to make a fortune thanks to uh, Tika Metrics uh, technology and solutions. So uh, for that, I'm forever grateful. So I'm really happy about this opportunity here to give a guess a little bit back to the community. Well, Yoni, thank you, thank you. And if you and you'll give a little bit about uh, Gatita here as well. But same goes to you. We just don't want to partner with anybody and everybody. We want to be selective about who we partner with and who we associate our brands with. And and you all are are really really well respected and build an incredible business that helps a lot of sellers. So that said, Yoni, if you want to uh, go to the next thank slide. You. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, all right. So a little bit about us. You know, Gatita, we're a technology company, a bunch of solutions. But our claim to fame is uh, helping uh, Amazon maximize refunds, uh, you, you know, using data. Uh, what's Gitira? Is it Gitira? Gitira? It doesn't really matter. It's an acronym. It stands for Get Intelligent Data Analytics. Okay, uh, and we believe in maximum recovery tailored to simplicity. Um, you know, we consider ourselves a global leader in the FBA auditing and reimbursement, uh, simply because we audit Amazon accounts, you know, in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Europe, wherever you sell on Amazon, we can audit your FBA transactions and help you out. We are an award-winning uh, service. We won the American Business Award, the Gold Award for our uh, dashboard technology. Uh, we do have a dedicated team of claim specialists. Uh, a big part of our team are ex-Amazon employees. We used to work in those departments, the FBI reimbursement departments. So they always make sure that we're compliant in every step of the way. And also we kind of know what we're looking for and how to, how to handle all the issues. Uh, we actually track and monitor our, our recovery rate. So uh, we would take pride in having the highest recovery rate in the industry. What this means is that for every case that we're going to open on behalf of the sellers, more than 70% will get reimbursed, will get paid. So for every like four cases that we open, around more than three cases will get paid. Um, and we like to uh, have our solutions affordable uh, for all sellers. Our model is based on what we call PPR, paper reimbursement only, which means there's no subscription, there's no monthly fee, there's no retainers. You only pay a fee if we're successful from the successful reimbursements that we give for you. So that's a little bit about us, a little bit about our content, uh, uh, context about what we are. And we can move on to the next slide. And oh, if you're wondering where to find us, of course you can visit gatita.com, but also you can find us in the Amazon App Store. That's a good place to see, uh, you know, authorized uh, uh, technology and software solutions for your Amazon account. So we're there. Obviously, Tikometrics is there. So this is kind of a little bit of a tip nugget. If you didn't know, there's an Amazon App Store. If you're looking for a solid authorized service provider in your Amazon account, which is probably the most expensive business vehicle that you own, uh, this is a good practice to go check the App Store. All right, let's get started, people. 
So now let's enter the right. So take your phone or your computer device, just visit uh, menti.com, see www.menti.com and put this code in, okay? This is gonna allow you to enter the Tika Metrics Live Trivia event. Um, we're gonna have about nine questions today for you guys. Um, the ones who's gonna answer all the questions correctly uh, will win $500 in cash. Uh, so take a minute to uh, put your information in so we, you can enter the trivia and answer the questions. Um, also, when you uh, enter this uh, module, you're going to see that you're going to also be able to submit your questions. So if you have any questions along the way about uh, anything, you just, just uh, feel free to uh, put it in. Uh, yeah. Jason, you guys hear me? You guys see me? Yeah, we do. So just a reminder, I saw some more people come in. Uh, go to menti.com. Uh, you can do it on your phone or the computer and just type in this code and just fill out the questions. Uh, fun thing is, is you guys registered for this webinar. We already have this data anyways, but. Um, yeah, everybody that's here, just, yeah, we have your, your email information, whatever. So it's not, the purpose is here not to do anything. It's just to be able to track your questions and your answers correctly. So we can give you the prize. This is optional. You could just, if you don't want to participate in the trivia, that's fine. You could just sit, kick back, relax and enjoy the show. But if you want to have a chance to win 500 bucks, this is a station when you got to go on board into the train, you know, we're, we're boarding in. Yeah. So this slide will come up a, a, a couple more as well, but I'll just give everybody you know, 20, 30 more seconds just to go to menti.com, put in the code, and, uh, and then once we progress the slides, you all will start to see it. So um, give just everybody just another second here. Um, great. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Yoni. Let's give a second. Let's give us a bit. I see people <clears throat> jumping. I see 22. It's, it's over 23. People are getting the hang of it. 24, 25. We're in a row. We got the wave. The people are coming in. Let's give it another 60 seconds. Um, don't worry, guys. We're gonna. The next slide will be uh, the first question just to get you guys warmed up, you know, get you uh, familiarized with the module. And then whoever didn't enter their information yet to, uh, to, to participate in the actual trivia event, you're going to get a one last chance to hop, you know, hop over the train. Uh, and uh, get a chance to win 500 bucks. Okay, we got 26. Let's give it uh, three. Okay, another one came in. Two. One. Let's see. Let's give it another three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, let's move up to uh, 28. So we got you know people coming in the last second. They're realizing. Uh, okay. Let's okay. Let's move to the next slide. We're gonna get a chance again to enter uh, the ride, guys. So don't worry. So yeah, click on the next one. Yeah. Uh, click it once. Give it a second. There's a lag here. Give me a second, Jason. Let me help you out. Okay. So, okay, guys. This is just a warm up. So go ahead, Jason. Take it. Yet. These are just a, a, a question, a few questions, just to understand what type of business you guys have. That way, when we see the answers come in. So the very first one, uh, Yoni, do you want to go through it? Yeah, just to, just so we have an idea who's with us today. What type of this is a icebreaker question? What type of a business are you? Are you a brand owner? Are you a reseller slash arbitrage seller? Are you a brand owner and a reseller? Are you an agency? Are you a service provider? Or are you just here to learn? You know, there's no wrong uh, um, answers here. You are what you are. So we got 20, 23 answers already submitted in. Uh, we had about 28 people that entered the right. So we're going to give another second until we break the 28 uh, number, 25, 26. So answers are coming in. Let's give another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see who we have here. We're going to submit the answers. And we're gonna pull up the answers and give it a second, Jason. Let me do it. You oh, got wow. it. I'm okay, not... good. All right. So uh, most of the people here in the the digital room are brand owners. Okay, 32% are brand owners. Then we have a, uh, the resellers. We have about a combination of 90% of the people here are about uh, you know 50/50. They have a brand plus they do reselling. We got an agency here. Welcome uh, on board, whoever the agency is. Uh, service providers are always welcome and here to learn. Awesome. Hopefully you learn something, pick up something. And if you ever try to decide to go sell online, we wish you uh, the best of luck uh, doing that. All right, let's uh, hop into this. Uh, okay, guys, so whoever didn't do this yet, if you did this, you don't have to do this again. Whoever did not enter the trivia, this is your last chance. You can visit menti.com, okay, and use the code 65054970. Okay, and you're gonna be able to uh, join the trivia and we're gonna be able to capture your um, answers. And if you get them all correctly or the most of it correctly, you'll win the 500 bucks. Only if you didn't do this, do this now. This is the last chance. If you did it, you don't have to do it again, so don't worry. Um, so we got three or four more. That you don't have to have every answer correct. If you do, incredible. Uh, maybe you'll get a, a, a Zoom date with Yoni and me. But uh, <laughs> those correct answers is gonna win the $500. So. 
Um, good to see some more people coming in. That's great. Yeah, yeah, not, I got nine more. Uh, so that's good. Uh, 10 more. So, all right, people picking up. Usually once we throw in the first question, people will realize there's a whole thing uh, going on here. So they, they, they realize they want to participate. It's kind of a wake up call. Okay, 13. Once again, if you did this already, you don't have to do it again. Only if you didn't put your information in, okay? If you want to join uh, the party, menti.com. The code is 6504970. I feel like a radio station. You know, you, you got to call it in and stuff like that. And <laughs> raffle a prize. You know, uh, let's give it a, like an acronym, WJXL, you know, like have those yeah. radio stations. Okay, we yeah. got 13 more people. That's awesome. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's continue the ride. Uh, let's see what we got. All right, the next icebreaker. Okay, uh, what kind of what is your primary retail category? Do you focus on clothing, shoes, and jewelry, home and kitchen, electronics? Uh, this once again, this is just an icebreaker. It's not a trivia question. Just so we have an idea who's in the room with us. Um, you, I think you also this is a multiple choice where you can uh, if you sell more than one category, you can put it in. Just to, once again to give us an idea who's with us today, what's the profile of the of the crowd of the stadium? Uh, you know, it gives us a good idea. So that's always fun. Um, Jason, you had anything to add? No, I mean, this, let, let's see the, we see the answers coming in again, just to warm us up before we get into the fun stuff. Um, you know, yeah, I, gotta, are, yeah. going this. I mean, I do this for a living and I didn't get them all right. And there are some things that I learned in the process. So that's, uh, really, really cool to see, man. So, um, let's go ahead and just close this one out. Cause this still isn't the trivia yet. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, we keep a pace here. You got it. You got to see 28, 3, 2, 1. All right, let's see. Let's check, take a look, guys. One second. Let me do this, Jason, real quick. Yeah. Thank you. This is a little bit. Okay, good. All right, so um, we got a big a power in electronics, a house uh, and household, uh, health and household, and then other. Um, okay, more, more answers are coming in. All right, so mostly uh, health and household and electronics, home and kitchen, and then we got other. Uh, all right, this is what we got. This is what we got. Yeah, full coverage, every category. Yeah, it's pretty diverse here. You know, this is a land of diversity. Actually, Home and Kitchen picked up a bit more and electronics even more. So, uh, but we got about a lot of others. So I guess we have you know, maybe unique uh, stuff here. Uh, I wonder what it is. Uh, I guess we have to check this out in a different time. All right, so uh, last poll question as a warm up: How often do you audit your FBA fees for accuracy and potential reimbursement? Oh, wow, there's fast answers. People are answering like fired. You know, got already 11 answers in the door, 12, 13. Uh, okay, I love cool. it. So, yeah, do you audit you? Did you ever audit? If you never audit your account, that's one answer. If you do daily, I salute you. If you do weekly, I salute you also. If you do monthly, okay. If you do quarterly, uh, if you do yearly, it's probably an issue. If it's not applicable, uh, applicable because you don't sell an FBA, I accept that as well. We got about 19, 21 answers coming in. You guys see here on the bottom right, that's, you know, the answers coming in. And it's rolling, it's rolling. We got 28. Okay, three, two, one. Let's run the answers. 20, no, hold on. a bit more people are coming in. But let's bring it out. All right, never. Okay. All right, so whoever never uh, audited their Amazon account, uh, you know, uh, this is your wake-up call. There's money waiting for you behind it. We can talk, uh, we're going to touch that a bit more later. Uh, I see nobody does it daily. Uh, okay. Weekly, great. Monthly is, is awesome. That's a good practice. Quarterly, it's a bit slow. Uh, yearly, nobody, but 17 is not app applicable. It makes sense because we have the non-seller. So that's fine. Um, okay. All right. Now everybody got a little bit of taste of the module. They're feeling good. We're about to hit, I believe, the first trivia question. If I'm right, am I correct? Click it. Click it. Here I go. I just clicked it. Give it a second. Yeah, let me try it. I think it's not really working when you do it. I don't know why, uh, but here we go. All right, guys, this is for the money. The first trivia question. Okay, help you already. How often does Amazon update a product sales rank? Do they update it hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly? Okay, this is the first trivia question. Today, once again, we have nine questions. So this is the first, uh, first out of nine. Whoever gets the most questions correctly, you don't have to get it all correctly, but if you get most of the answers correctly, you enter a chance to win $500. Um, we got to give it another 20 seconds. We got to do this stuff fast, guys. We, uh, we have a lot of questions, a lot of knowledge to drop, and time is limited and short. We, we don't have all day, unfortunately, to uh, have your attention. But 20 mm -hmm. answers are already in. Let's try and get at least 30 if we can on this one. Uh, we're, we're inching up there. Um, yeah, we're going to try to break 30, yeah. This is a funny one. I think uh, Andrew uh, Weber and I, we both got this one wrong. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what comes That's up. That's right. 
Uh, All right, we got 28 people, 29. We want to hit 30, we're going to hit it. Let's give it three more seconds. I wonder if there's a 31. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm hitting it. Holy smokes. So we got uh, somebody said weekly 7%, daily 27%, but hourly 7%. Congratulations, guys. Whoever said hourly, that's the correct answer, okay? Amazon updates their sales rank every single hour, which is crazy. The, this, the message here behind this uh, – or the lesson here be behind this uh, answer and question is that, you know, when you guys are looking uh, at what to sell on Amazon uh, and you're kind of looking at, you're relying on the best sales rank, okay, you want to create your new product, your next product or whatever category or ace you want to, uh, or rank that you're looking to get into, it's very fluid. Make sure you look over time. Don't look at that first, you know, a few days or a few weeks. It's, you know, it's very, very fluid. Uh, the best thing to, 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 to check out when you try to uh, sell something on Amazon, look for the long-term trend of the bell sales rank. If you see it's, you know, steady there, that's probably a good investment for you, an opportunity for you to invest into it. Uh, also, if you're reselling, check. It might get hot, then really quickly cold. It gets changed hourly. Most of you guys knew that, so that's great. Uh, let's continue to the next question. One other thing I just want to go, if you just want to go back to that one real quick. Um, yeah. A couple things here. Number one, if you're using, if you're using best seller rank, to determine what product like it can take quite a while from products you want to look up sales rank by the time you actually go to to, to place your order make sure you're constantly checking it throughout the process the other thing too is i get this question a lot from an advertising perspective which is they use um the sales rank as like as you know the sacrosanct like we are going to build our entire um you know uh, design based on this Take it with a grain of salt. It is very, very good directionally, but if you use product sales rank as the main way for you to structure campaigns or what to advertise or how to advertise, it changes all the time. So, and also a lot of the tools that, 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 are, that are out there getting this data, it's scraped data. It's not necessarily directly done by Amazon's API. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. So it's very, very good directionally, but do not bake an entire strategy on that. Yep, you got it, nailed it. Uh, let me do the next one, Jason. I think when you click it, it doesn't work for some reason. So let me give you the click. All right, guys, this is for the money again. Trivia question number two. What percentage of buyers are more likely to purchase on Amazon than any other e-commerce sites? Okay, is it 19%, 29%, 59%, or 89%? So let me kind of illustrate the question. I, you know, if you, oh, you log into Amazon as a, as a consumer, as a shopper, what are the chances you're going to buy there as opposed to any other website? You know, a dot com, this, dot com, that. What's, what are the chances? Is it 19%, 29, 59, or 89? We got already 20 answers in the door, 21, 23. <clears throat> They're coming in. Let's see what you guys think and say. This is an interesting one, too, because you have to think about a number of things. Like, what is Amazon's, uh, like, e-commerce penetration, but also what is buyer behavior? So, it, 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 you really have to really consider this. And I'd actually, I don't, I don't think that this data is released, but... Um, It'd be really cool to see this demographically as well, uh, wouldn't it? To see, um, you know, I know millennials have a ton of trust in, in Amazon as a site and platform. All right, looks like we have got 30 answers. That's 31. Okay, good. Welcome on board, whoever uh, uh, joined the ride. Okay, so most of you guys said it's 89%, uh, and some of you guys said that it's um, <clears throat> 59%. So congratulations again. Most of you guys got uh, the the answer correctly. It's 89% more likely. For a consumer to you know to make the purchase on Amazon than any other website, that's a huge thing for you guys to understand. Because if you guys sell on Amazon, you're in the Amazon selling game. You're in the right place. That's Amazon's moat. That's the the competitive advantage that Amazon has you know against everybody else on the internet trying to sell something. You know, there's 89% more chance that a consumer will finally you know will, will make an end purchase and you know buy something on Amazon than any other place. So if you guys are in this ecosystem in that race. Uh, you know, way to go. I congratulate, congratulate you for that. And that's kind of the purpose of the question uh, to raise the awareness for you guys to know that, you know, this is where the, the, the center of gravity is. Go ahead, Jason. It also is very important to think about, okay, what other channels do I sell on? Are my prices in line? Uh, is Amazon higher than it is other channels? So I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is because it's different for every business, but you need to think. Am I a one-piece seller? Am I a three-piece seller? What am I on other platforms? You just want to make sure that you have price integrity as best as you can. There we go. We got a question coming in. You want to do it now, or you want to take questions at the end, Jason? Um, let's just let's just go, go go to this one now, actually, while we're on the subject. Okay. I couldn't submit my answer. I want to answer 2089. Okay. Uh, you can email me later, or whoever had that issue. I'll give you my email information. Don't worry. If you uh, if you wanted to do it, we'll respect that. We're here to you know make everybody happy. <laughs> and no worries. 
Yeah. And uh, just what I've noticed is sometimes if for some reason your your uh, your platform freezes up uh, on your phone while you're looking, refresh the page. It'll take you right back to the same question. That that usually works for me if I have that issue. Thank you, Andrew. Yep. I just like All right. it. All right, guys. Trivia question number three. Um, wow. Go ahead, Jason. This is yours for <clears throat> this is a Tika question. Percentage of sales on Amazon are preceded by the click of an ad. Explain. So, uh, so basically. If I am going to actually uh, purchase an item, what 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 percentage of those sales actually started in some part of the journey journey with clicking on an advertisement for that product? Okay, so I'm an Amazon consumer. I go in, I want to buy stuff on Amazon. So what are the percentage that I'm actually going to make a purchase using an ad, right? Or when a purchase has already been done, what's what percentage of sales that actually converted? actually were clicked on an ad before that purchase as well. Got it. Yeah. So what was, you know, the ads were involved along the way, one way or another, right? So they, yeah. what's the influence of the ads when a consumer shop on Amazon? Is it, is it influenced 20%, 30%, 40%, or 50%? That's a deep and important question in regarding to ads on Amazon. Uh, what's the influence of ads? You know, from your 100% kind of uh, orders that you get on Amazon, is it uh, is, is ad influencing 20% of it? 30%, 40%, or 50%. We've got 22 answers coming in. Let's try to bounce around the 30. Guys, we got to make it quick. we got more uh, questions, and we want we want you guys to win, and we got to drop more knowledge. So let's uh, let's uh, give it another, I guess, 10 seconds here. we got 26. All right? Five. Yeah, just, and just remember that you need to you just need to answer as many as you can. So we see us getting up there. Let's yeah, don't be afraid to submit the wrong question, uh, I mean the wrong answer, because um, – you don't have to get them all correctly. You have to get most of them correctly. We got 29, so let's give it three more seconds for the 30th. Three, two, there we go. Okay, let me bounce it up. All right, let, let's... Uh, let me, let me click it. Give me a second. There we go. All right, take this one. I, I'm not sure what the answer is here, so that you know the answer. So, Jason. So who are the people who clicked on the 40%? That is correct. Using Takeometrics data to analyze, and the beauty about Takeometrics is we also look at you know, MWS connection, and we can see sales uh, even outside of advertising. Our data has shown us that 40% of sales on Amazon are preceded by the click of an advertisement. So this is incredibly important. Like if you're not advertising or you're, you're under investing in advertising, uh, it's very, very important that if you want to increase discoverability, searchability, and actual sell through, you can be missing out as much as 40% of sales by not advertising. So it's it's incredibly important to see that. Um, uh, that that's okay, same. Let, let me yeah, just mark it as answer, so it's gonna go away. There we go. Got it. Okay. Got it. So okay, so I see that about you know, a third of the people got it correctly. So good, we have a we have a strong crowd here today. Uh, I see somebody is answering after we uh, submit the answers or show the answers. Uh, that's not gonna help. It's too late, guys. So we'll try to make it on time. If you submit your answer after we uh, show the, the the correct answers. Uh, it's not gonna let you uh, basically get the you know the credit for it. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the next uh, slide. Let me do it for you. Let me help you because it's when you click it doesn't work. I'm not sure why. Go ahead. What is this about Jay? So uh, the the thing that's really important to know here is not every sale from an advertisement is created equal. When we look at advertising, we think about what is incremental to my business. What that means is if I were not to have advertised that product, what would I have gotten that sale anyways? So think about it. If I'm selling, um, just as an example, Nike shoes, for instance, if I advertise on the term Nike men's running shoe and I am Nike, I they're already looking to buy Nike. So they're probably already in a good position to buy from you. So if you advertise, you could be... Uh, uh, starting to bleed into your organic sales and cannibalize, but it's important that you do advertise on your own brand because if not, Adidas or another brand is going to come in and do that as well. So you want to make sure that you should be willing to spend more for an advertisement that is for a generic search term like men's running shoe size nine or even a competitor. If you're Nike, go after Adidas. So it's very because the moment that they're not advertising that or if you have a better offer, et cetera, you can win that advertisement and actually get that sale. So everybody, I, I encourage you all to, to to reach out to me directly or just go to our website and download this ebook. We'll have a link following up that you can actually talk about how to segment campaigns and how to measure true incrementality. So that said, I'll click next. I think I have the ability to, to now. There we go. Um, 
I did want to give Yoni an opportunity to talk about, um, yeah, you know, a case study and, and how all Amazon FBA fees aren't created equal as well. Yeah, so uh, we'll make this a short and sweet. You know, this is a quick case study of a $10 million account. And I guess the weight of the Amazon FBA fees, I want to raise everybody's awareness about the types of fees and how much uh, is it influencing the bottom line and the profitability. So this is, you know, product charges. You see this $437,000. Uh, you know, orders generated in, in two weeks. That's about the run rate of about 10 million a year. You see, it's kind of hazy. Amazon tells you Amazon fees, 125,000. So we did the work for you and we'll let you know that, you know, fees type A, okay, or about 51,000, they're FBA related. And these fees are pick and pack fees. When Amazon picks a unit from the bin, your product from the bin, packages in a box and ships it out, they charge the pick and pack fee. So 51,000 were charged out of the 437, which is about 12%. And then over here, you kind of realize FBA fees. Okay, FBA fees. Uh, all these FBA fees are related to shipping charges, uh, return fees, restocking fees, uh, inbound shipments, stuff like that. Uh, that took about 13,000 out of 437. That's about 3%. Most of you guys think, oh, FBA fees is probably only when they charge me a re return fee or restocking fee or when I ship your products in. Actually, no, it's more about the pick and pack. That's a heavyweight champion of the FBA fees. So it, ch it charges a lot. Uh, so this is a prime example. So know your fees. And there's opportunity to save on those fees as a as the myriad of, uh, of, of techniques of doing it. But the weighted dimension fees, okay, the pick and pack fees that they, they actually Amazon charges you, it's based on weighted dimension. So the larger the product or heavier that you have, the more you're going to pay in fees. And the, the lower it is, uh, you'll pay less fees because it's influenced by the, the, the weighted dimensions. So uh, that being said, um, you know, you got to know your numbers. So if you want to know your numbers on the FBA level, on the FBA level or your entire business level, we have a free template for you, okay? You can visit just thegatita.com slash profit. And this is, a, you know, it's an Excel file with all these formulas. You can customize what you need here on the descriptions and have all your numbers intact, you know, because to have a successful Amazon business or any business, for that matter, you have to have a, a triangle in mind. That's your North Star. So it's sales, how much you're running in sales, what's your cost of doing business, okay? What's your bottom line profit? So this tool helps you streamline all of that. You know, how, many, how much you're doing in sales, you know, what is the cost of doing business? You know, you got wages, cost of goods, credit card charges, 3PL storage, all that good stuff. You throw it in there and track your bottom line, okay? And do it religiously. I recommend every month, but at the very least every quarter, know your numbers. So if you need this uh, tool, it's a free tool, get to com slash profit. You know, know your numbers. It makes a whole, you know, a lot of difference. I know a lot of Amazon revenue millionaires, but they're actually losing money because they have no idea where all their fees and money is going to. And they wake up one morning, they realize they they're, they dug a hole to themselves. So know your numbers, know, know if you're making a profit or a loss, know it to the penny, and then you'll be on the right track for the continued success. Uh, one thing on that too is like, we, we work with a lot of million dollar plus sellers. And it's surprising how infrequent they actually run a p and um, or they just don't do one at all. So Alistair, our founder and CEO, he always says this, like he walked around um, when he first created his Amazon storefront back in 2003 and he was selling millions of dollars. He walked around and said, I'm, I'm, in, I'm selling, I'm, I'm making millions of dollars. That's not true. What you do in revenue and what you actually take home at the end of the day is what matters. Whatever you want to just put food on the table, you want to sell your business, you need to know this stuff. So very, very important. So I click next. Um, uh, trivia number four, Yoni, over to you. All right. So if a seller got uh, overcharged with FBA pick and pack fees, right? How far can a seller get reimbursed? Is it one month? Is it three months? Is it six months or 18 months? How far back can you get a reimbursement for Amazon's pick and pack uh, overcharges? So once again, if you sell this uh, phone cover, Amazon picks the unit, packages it, and ships it out to the customers, they charge you a pick and pack fee. If they, instead of charging you two and a half dollars every time, they have the wrong information because of that. They think your item is like 10 pounds and 300 inches. So they're charging you $10. That's a fun, that's a pick and pack overcharge fee. So if that happens, how far can you go back and get reimbursed for all that? Yeah, okay. Back to the, the question of how often you are auditing this, right? So we'll see if the answers come in. We'll give it, uh, everybody a few more minutes uh, or a few more seconds here to, to, looks like we already have 22 responses. Let's try and get that up to 30. And, uh, yeah. And yeah, this is this, this is a really really important topic. So give everybody a few more seconds here. Uh, yeah, if anybody in the yeah, if anybody in the crowd wasn't even aware of this uh, type of fee or that the fact that they can be overcharged, uh, hopefully this wake up call will save them going forward a lot of money and uh, you know, will be uh, beneficial for them uh, just by being here today. Yeah, Jason, you were saying. <clears throat> yeah, it's it just this was mind blowing to me. And remember, this this often 
this can change too. So you need to or either know yourself and be in the know or work with somebody who keeps uh, abreast of what's happening here. We're at 30. Let's show the results. All right, guys. Let's see what you guys got. All what? right. Months or, month or is there. So, um, Yoni, spill the beans. What's the answer? Okay, so the correct answer is three months. Okay, so most of you guys thought it's 18 months, but no, it's only 90 days. You have 90 days to get it back. Okay, so if, uh, let's say, let's give a scenario. In, in the whole year, Amazon overcharged you $100,000 in pick and pack overcharges, but in the past 90 days, they only charge you 30 grand. You're only gonna get back, uh, you're only gonna be able to get back 30 grand, and the whole 70 grand is expired. You cannot get it. Okay, once again, we have somebody submitting their answers afterwards. I apologize, it's not gonna fly. Uh, but once again, this is to raise the awareness that that's what's going on. You have 90 days to deal with this, and you have to be religious about it, okay? And uh, because of that, actually, that leads us kind of to the next slide. If you need a tool or an instrument to help you track and monitor and do this audit at least every 90 days, you can do it every month if you want it, but at least every 90 days, you can just visit gatita.com slash dimensions, and you're going to get this Excel file where you're going to be able to track <clears throat> your AC and the SKU, and you know, put your, your, if you're the brand, if you're the reseller, you should know the, what the weight and dimension of your product is and your ASIN is, so put that information there. And you're going to be able to do this in this uh, free file. But if you want to get something more advanced and a bit easier on the eye, you can just sign up to Gatita. It's absolutely free. You log, you go to Gatita.com, sign up, and you would join our, you know, you will get access to our free uh, dashboard and our dashboard technology. And you're going to be able already to see Amazon's data uh, on your ASINs in the dashboard. See on the left side, you're going to see pick and pack. And over here, you're going to see Avery ASIN, what Amazon thinks is the wedding dimensions. So by you knowing the wedding dimension, you're going to be able to identify right away you know, if something is uh, inflated, if you see any numbers that are inflated, instead of uh, being a pound, it's three pounds, or instead of being, a, let's say, this uh, 5.71 uh, length inches, it's 51, seven inches, uh, 51 inches, you take action immediately. So this is a tool to give you visibility. It's a new release. Anybody needs it, you know, it's free to join and check it out. I uh, hope that helps. Um, let's go on to the next question, unless you have something to say before that, Jay. Uh, it just, like, this is a, this is a frequent, this comes up quite a bit, right? So you, let's say that um, you start analyzing or using a tool that analyzes this and, the, and they think it's longer or the width is wider or it weighs more. It's very possible that this can be misconstrued and you can be overcharged. So it's very important you understand this. And again, just to reiterate, you only have 90 days from the, from the time an order, an order has been shipped and delivered for you to actually reclaim that. So you got to be on top of it. Yeah, if you guys are sitting there thinking, ah, it's probably everything's all right, uh, let me tell you an example where we see uh, some of this happen. Uh, it could be your competition. You know, you guys are competing with a competitor. What they do is simply to, to interfere with your uh, uh, profitability. They take your ASIN, they list it on their account, they never offer it out, they never sell it, but they just change your information. So this, they change your uh, weight and dimension. They say, oh, this ASIN, instead of being a pound, it's 100 pounds. Instead of being 10 inches, it's 100 inches, and Amazon starts to overcharge you. And they, they drain you out. All your profits are being wiped out because of the pick and pack overcharges. That's a malicious attack. We see this happening left and right. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. Make sure you're on the safe side. Better safe, safe and sorry. And check it every quarter. All right. Let's run to the next question. Time is getting short. And we got to give some money away today. Let me help you out. Okay. Here we go. All right. Trivia question number five. Across the top 100,000 search terms, which brand has the most sponsored product placements? Uh, in the electronics and uh, electronics categories, Apple, HP, Samsung, or Microsoft. So, if they're take the hundred thousand search terms that can be relevant for any one of these brands, who spends the most amount of money with sponsored placements um, on these brands? So on Amazon, right? On Amazon. On Amazon. Wow. So you got the big, uh, big, the big ballers are spending money on advertisement on Amazon, right? Yeah. We'll 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 see here won't we um this is just an example here because these are just brands that everybody knows and recognizes and just to illustrate the point here yeah uh, so you would think you know these guys are so famous already or these is, these are pretty much super brands why would they need to advertise any longer any further and they do you know guess what they do and there's a purpose to that the brand awareness you know if you if you're in the top of the world right now nothing um guarantees that you're going to stay there that's why you got to keep your brand floating out there and, and compete for for um I guess, for lack of a better word, just exposure. Exposure, you got to be exposed everywhere on a global level. And the more you do, the more you get, you get a chance to be recognized and convert and grow your business and your brand. Yeah. And just to, just to add to that, uh, too, too, you know, one thing that we see, uh, and this is kind of what, what this data is based on, is consumers trust Amazon. And what you see overwhelmingly is that 
when you look across these top search terms, and this is across across categories, you see it's the top placements that are getting a really sizable share of conversions. People trust Amazon when they type in a search query, they trust Amazon's going to give them good results, whether that's a sponsored placements or organic placements. So you see this really across across the board here. Got it. All right, let's pull the, the answers. We got 30 people and boom. What do we have, Jason? The answer is Samsung. Um, so Samsung actually is is dominating, more so dominating the search terms uh, of through advertising. So 39% um, of folks got that right. That is correct. Um, and then, yeah, so really important to know that uh, actually on that note, I'll click the next slide. Um, Waver, I would I don't want to take this from you because you worked so hard in this project. Do you sure. Mind <laughs> sure, uh, sure. So yeah, yeah, happy happy to talk to you, Jason. So what that data was was drawn from and where you can kind of see this across 20 different categories is this tool we created called the brand performance matrix. So you can actually visit it, you can play around with it yourself. It's at takeametrics.com slash BPM. You can pick your category or a category that you're interested in. And what it shows you is across the top sellers for uh, that particular category, what's their presence across the top 100,000 search terms? And you can look at this on different uh, levels. You can look at it in terms of organic presence on page one. You can look at it on sponsored placements or even sponsored brands or sponsored products. So you can even look at it on those different elements. And so it allows you that uh, on a relative basis, you can see how you stack up, let's say, versus some other bigger, you know, other big brands in your category. And also what's cool about this is you can also create your own competitive set. So you can select or deselect certain brands and see how the graph rescales itself. So again, you can kind of look at, hey, who are my biggest competitors and how are they doing vis-a-vis -vis each other versus your brand, let's say if you're on there. Um, so definitely a great, great tool. I encourage you all to check it out, um, you know, after, yeah, after this webinar. More categories and more brands as well. Um, so. Um, uh, I, I want just want to finish with Andrew's note. Um, you know what they say, you know, keep your friends closed, but your competition even closer. So this is the tool you got to use, right? A absolutely. And so even if you're not the biggest brand, it's it's good to know, you know, who's dominating, what their listings look like, etc. So Yoni, trivia six over to you, buddy. All right, guys. How soon can Amazon sellers get paid by Amazon? Is it within the hour, within a day, within seven days, or 14 days? All right, let's, I'm going to give a very short, uh, I'm going to give 20 seconds on this, okay? So I'm going to make a, a fast one because we got to start speeding up. We got about 18 minutes till the end of the session. So, and this is, uh, you know, we, we got to go to, I guess, what you call the fire, fire rounds or bullet rounds and make it a bit harder, you know? We don't have, you know, so uh, we're going to make it more of a speed round. So we're going to give it 10, yeah. 9. I wish we, had the, wish we had the Jeopardy music. That would be really helpful. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> 8, <laughs> 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Put your answers in. We're closing the shop. Another two, almost there. We got the 33, two, one. Once I click here, that's it. All right, let's do it. I did it. Took Thank a you. chance. I took a chance. I took a risk. All right, some, uh, let me do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most of you guys said uh, 14 days, some of you guys said seven days, some of you said one day and one hour. So um, the correct uh, answer is one day. There's some legacy Amazon account, accounts out there. You know, back in its early days, Amazon used to pay out daily, much like PayPal. When it was, you know, the early days of e-commerce, PayPal was paying, giving you the money right away. Amazon was kind of slow. It was giving you the day after. So that's as soon as you can get it. That's, that's how soon you can uh, Amazon sell get paid, at least some of them. Most of you guys know the 14 days, uh, so that's why it was kind of a trick question. By default, today it's 14 days. Uh, see, we got another answer coming in. I apologize. Uh, it's too late. But um, one thing on this too is obviously Amazon has the ability to pay certain accounts daily or even seven days for that matter. But um, you know, there are a lot of good companies out there. I mean, for instance, you know, I'll, I'll just shout, shout one out like Payoneer, for instance, they can do instant advance. Um, uh, so I would encourage you all to take a look at some of those options too, especially heading into Q4 where inventory is incredibly important. So we can get, uh, you, you can uh, talk to me afterwards. I can point in the right direction. So let's go to the next one for time's sake. Yeah, actually before, yeah, the next one's kind of in the same note. Uh, so let me, before you hit that. So once again, most sellers know that's 14 days. So, you know, over time it just gets harder because it used to be one day, then, you know, they bounced it to 14 days, but even now in 14 days, they take for a, a, a 
a big amount of sellers, they take actually, they put a reserve, like 20 or 30% of the money, they, they put on reserve. So if you generate 100 grand in sales, it was, they're supposed to give you $100,000, they're going to keep like 20 or $30,000 dollars in their pocket. That's why access to cash today more than ever becomes a crucial thing. You see, mentioned Pioneer, great company, great opportunity to get uh, money daily there. There's a daily advance, I believe, or a cash advance uh, solution that they have. And if you need more access to money, um, we can help, actually. We're not going to give you uh, money with interest. We're actually just going to give you money that's owed to you. And, you know, audit your account. Uh, you know, this is kind of the bread and butter what we get you to do. There's rules to the game. Um, um, but before we talk about the rules, let's talk about the potential. So we see that FBA discrepancies <clears throat> can range between 1% to 3% of your annual FBA revenue. So if you do like a million dollars on Amazon annually, the discrepancy rate can range between ten to thirty thousand dollars. So that's opportunity right there for you guys to you know grab that money out, okay? Because Amazon allows for most issues to go up to eighteen months to get reimbursed for most discrepancies. So you got eighteen months to do it. Don't let anything expire, okay? Don't miss out. If it's too much for you, too much of edic, you know, reach out. There's solutions out there. It happens to be the Gatira we're one of them, and we'll be, able to be happy to help you. And if you do we deal with this all this stuff on your own, just make sure you comply. You don't flood Amazon with cases and bad cases or badly investigated cases. Don't waste their time because they, that time is very valuable to them. They can help other sellers to do the job correctly. So once again, access to more cash, we can help. And this is kind of a, a little quick case study of the impact of good auditing to the bottom line. So we have a real case study, $18 million seller, sold about 300,000 units in one year. Okay, 9,000 units got affected. So that's around the almost a 3% benchmark that you mentioned. The spectrum is between 1% to 3%. So this is 2.8%. Um, Gatita, we're able to get them back about 1.5% in reimbursements. Uh, which after our fees actually translated to 151,000 of extra cash, okay, which um, impacted the bottom line by 11%. So you see about a 1% uh, from the top line of uh, uh, reimbursement recovery, you know, pushed uh, the bottom line by about 11% because the gross profit was 1.3 million before Gatita came in. We added another 151,000 and it boosted up, uh, it boosted the profit by 11%. That's kind of the uh, how uh, the impact, the positive impact uh, auditing can have on your Amazon business, but. Three more, uh, two more impacts, uh, uh, positive impacts on your uh, uh, on your business. Okay, uh, if you're trying to sell your Amazon business, that 151,000 is going to get a multiple of 3x, 4x, 5x, whatever, right? So, all, so if somebody wants to buy your Amazon uh, business, away, uh, you know, from your hands, they're going to give you a triple, quadruple, or five times more on what your earnings are. So, if you get your 151,000 dollars back, that's worth five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand. That's a big impact. But on the flip side, if you bought, if you just bought an Amazon business or an Amazon account, and you can go back 18 months and recover all that money, it's going to improve your ROI. You're going to get your money back earlier. Okay, so this is kind of the the importance and the money and 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 the positive impacts of uh, FBA auditing and reimbursements. And if you do need a little bit of incentive to try us out, uh, I, I mentioned this to uh, Jason before the show. You know, this is the show where everyone's a winner. So if you don't win the 500 bucks in cash, we actually created a different uh, $500 gift for you. You can join Gatita, you know, use the promo code TICA500. And the first $500 that we're going to get for you in FBA reimbursements will be absolutely free. We're not going to charge you anything. Okay, our model is based on PPR, what we call PPR, which is pay per reimbursement. So you only pay a uh, fee, a 25% fee from the reimbursements that we get for you. Uh, but this offer, you know, the, no matter what, 500 bucks, you, it's going to be yours and going to be in your pocket. You can try us out. We're not going to charge you a fee. If you like us, you can stay. If you don't, you know, you can leave. That's fine as well. You know, and this uh, event today, everybody's a winner. So this is your opportunity to uh, enjoy 500 bucks in a different way. All right. Trivia question number seven. We got 12 minutes for this whole session. So let's make this a fire round. An Amazon company meeting, okay, when they have a company meeting, a high level meeting, okay, in Seattle or maybe another HQ that they have, I think in Virginia. Who always has a seat at the table, guys? Is it Jeff Bezos, FBA team member, the customer, or Amazon Insights team member? Okay. All right. Once again, a company meeting, there's always an extra seat for somebody. And who is that seat for? Is it Jeff Bezos, an FBA team member, the customer, or Amazon Insights team member? Okay. Uh, we're going to make this a fire round. We're going to make this quick. So I'm going to start the countdown. I'm going to give about 10 seconds. All right. So 10. Nine, eight, seven, six. You gotta hurry up, guys. Five, four, three, two. All right, it's coming in. 26, 27, one. Let's do this, guys. Just put the yeah. answer in. Just whatever it is. You're gonna get your chance. 28, come on. I'm pushing it. Am I doing it? Let me do it. I'm taking a risk right now. 29. Yeah. Ah, 
I'm pressing it. I pressed it. All right, man, we got a strong crowd today. People know their stuff. You're right. The customer, there's always an MTC for the customer. That's an extremely valuable cultural thing that Amazon is doing, and I recommend each and every one of you to adopt that. Anything that you do in your Amazon business or in your online business at all, it's just a good practice, have the customer in mind. What would the customer say? What would they think? Would they approve of this? Would they like it? Would they appreciate it? It can be the utility of the product or the way you visualize it, the way you write about it, whatever it is. Have them in mind. This is what made Amazon Amazon, and this is the lesson here. Okay, trivia question number eight. Oh, that's a smart question. How much in federal taxes did Amazon pay in years 2017 and 2018? Is it 11 billion, 7.3 billion, 1.7 billion, 600 million, or 129 million, or zero? Okay, um, in those two tax years, okay, how much uh, did Amazon pay in federal taxes? Okay, we're gonna make this quick, 10 seconds, you know, Take your chance. If you're not sure, just pull put a question in. It's better better uh, you know put a, uh, an answer than nothing. Better to be wrong than nothing. It's a, it's a so yeah, also it's, not down this time. So we're at 10, 9, 8, 7. Give you a chance to drink your your mango smoothie. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Oop, let's see if we get one more. Uh, all right, Yoni, hit it. All right, let me hit it. 27, come on, put the last question. Three, two, one. 28 is in. Nope, not, not in. Zero. Money. Holy smokes. You got a smart okay. bunch here. That's Man, correct. We got, we, got some, we got some Amazon professors in the room. Yes, you're right. Amazon paid zero dollars in taxes for, for two consecutive tax years. And the reason is because there's a, a since the new administration came in in 2016, they made... um. They provided businesses, technology businesses, a uh, tax break where if you uh, invest in technology and technology development, you can write it all off in, in your taxes. So actually, in those two years, Amazon made about $11 billion, but they reinvested all into their uh, technology and R&D. So they paid zero in taxes. And this is a lesson for you guys listening. That's what makes Amazon Amazon. That $11 billion is going to create the next thing that's going to wow us all on Amazon and keep them ahead of the game. So uh, you're, in a good you're in a good spot. Okay, last trivia question, guys. Uh, Last wait, question. Phone here. Do you want to run this question? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is, this is a good one, especially you know we've talked a lot about Amazon, but let's let's focus on Walmart. I'm sure a lot of you uh, are at least looking into it if you're not selling already. So what is Walmart's share of the USD commerce market? And this is uh, a share as of June, uh, June of this year. So is it 4.1 percent, 5.8 percent, 7.2 percent, or 10.5 percent? And uh, as, as a note, as part of this, Walmart actually, right, it, it actually only surpassed eBay recently, right? This was actually something where for a long time, eBay was the number two next to, next to Amazon. Um, and only very recently did Walmart actually leapfrog them. So uh, something very interesting there. All right, so it's the last question. Let's give uh, folks maybe another another 10 seconds to answer. Looks like we almost have everybody. Get it in the middle. Andrew, though. give them the 10 seconds. Count them 10, down. 10, 9, 8, 7, get them in, 6, <laughs> 5, 4, 3. Oh, I think we got five more of you. <laughs> 2, come on. Uh, right. No wrong. Just get it in. Just get it in. Get it in. Oh, it is. oh they're getting in. It's the last second. Come on. Yeah. 3. Two, we can hit that 1027 is coming. We can hit that. Okay. All right, boom. All right. Oh, look at this. A more smart people. There's a lot of smart people in this in this uh, in this one. So indeed, 5.8 is the correct answer. Um, and so that and to give you some perspective on this, Amazon is in the mid 30s. So there's still a wide gap between number two at Walmart and number one at Amazon. But Walmart is growing very quickly. So, you know, it, it's something that we always talk about. Where do you want to be? You want to be where the growth is. And Amazon obviously is where, you know, the bulk of your money is likely going to come from. But if you're a seller and you can get live on Walmart, you can kind of ride as they're really pushing e-commerce and their marketplace is growing. In, in Q2, was it 97% year over year growth in Q2? Yeah. And you see this yeah. with like, you're seeing a lot of their acquisitions and movements, like creating Walmart fulfillment service, acquiring Bonobos. Uh, Moose Jaw, Hay Needle, acquisition of Jet. Um, Flipkart. 
Yeah, exactly. So like for us, like we're seeing a huge growth in like, I remember years ago when Walmart announced their integration with Channel Advisor had, I believe like a one year exclusive, everybody was like, is Walmart ready? Like that is no longer a question. Do not miss the boat. It's very important that, that, that that's, a, that's in a channel for you all as well. So yeah, hi, high level, let me help you out. High level, make sure your chips are definitely on Amazon, but put some chips on Walmart. And I would say even after that on your .com, whatever it is, your .com, that's, that's a good uh, delta to have. Go ahead, Jason. I, I love it. I love it. Was that the last trivia question? It was. So, um, yeah. you know, whoever, uh, we don't know, but the, congratulations. Somebody's definitely won. And, uh, you know, let's let's see the next slide just to make sure because we have something here. In cold hard cash. And then somebody and anybody else who wants to get a refund in the first $500 free, like Yoni said, everybody wins. I feel like Oprah right now. Um, <laughs> You get five hundred dollars. You get five hundred dollars, um, folks. Thank. Uh, is there any questions that we didn't answer that that we should get to? Uh, Waiver looks like it, it, it looks like we're we're good in the in the in the chat here. So uh, I think again though, uh, you know, as, as it says here though, feel free to email either Yoni or, or Jason directly. And again, you'll you'll get a replay of this webinar uh, within the next twenty four hours, along with some of the stuff we mentioned on here, the free ebook that you can take a look at. And uh, then over the next few days, we'll do a tabulation and see who the who the big winner was and, and notify you. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled from that. Obviously, we had a had a lot of uh, great candidates here. Um, but yeah, thanks thanks so much for joining. I don't know if you guys have uh, any any last thoughts, but I think this was this was a lot of fun and exciting and really really positive to see the engagement. You always take a risk when you try something new, and it's really good to see. Uh, obviously a lot of participants, but even more attendees hanging out in the shadows. So thank you all. Really hope you all learned something here today and hopefully it was a little bit of fun and joy to, uh, to Wednesday for you all. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Had a great ride. Congratulations to the winner. Um, what do you guys see now? You guys see me, the screen. I'm not sure what, what I'm seeing right now. I'm a little, uh, we're, uh, we're here, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be closing this out. And again, thanks so much, everybody. You'll get a replay of this and uh, thanks Yoni and Jason. This was a lot of fun. We'll, we'll do it again sometime. Why not? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Anthony said it was super fun as well. Appreciate it. Thanks guys. Take care. Yeah. Have a good. Uh, happy Q4. Good luck, everybody.